It's Friday, February 6th, 2015, and you're listening to Sin Boldly, the podcast, The Sign Your Name Project. I'm your host, Trey Comstock, and with me, with me as ever is the lovely Stephen Doss. Aw, I'm lovely. As ever. Um, on tonight's episode, we are, are delving into what is certainly a, a hot topic in the news with a strange theological implications uh, in, in an all, uh, all discussion show. So my, my high school journalism uh, teacher would not have appreciated that introduction as I did what's <laughs> called burying the lead. Um, that, that we are. Lead, that lead was pretty buried. I, I, bur- I buried the lead. I teased it, you know, but I, I bur- I'm still burying the lead. So we're going to talk about anti-vaxxing. <laughs> um, I, this is, for various reasons, is mostly the measles outbreak at Disneyland. Um, it's becoming very much a nationwide conversation. Um, I was reading an article just this week that now that there are, there are pediatricians who are having to consider either opening up a separate waiting room for non-vaccinated children or aren't taking non-vaccinated clients or um, patients who refuse to be vaccinated. Um, there's an outbreak of measles at a preschool now where like four or five infants who are not old enough to have been vaccinated yet now all have it. Um, and, and, and there's just, it's, and of course there's all the interviews with, you know, these kind of, it's the, it's the libertarians and the natural food people. And it's kind of the extremes of the left and extremes of the right, both kind of rallying around this. We don't have to vaccinate if we don't want to, but now there's a huge, relatively large measles outbreak working its way from West to East in the United States. And. I'm sitting here in Georgia um, with a child on the way. Yeah, um, yeah, which is exciting. You know, I guess this is the first time I've talked about this in the podcast. Yeah, Sydney and I are are expecting the birth of our first child in May. It's it is very exciting. It is very exciting. And and, and I'm scared on a lot of levels. Of course, just the idea of parental responsibility is, is frightening in a good way. You know, I'm very much looking forward to being a father. I've always wanted to be. Um, but I'm also terrified because I can't vaccinate my kid against measles until he's 18 months old. And now one of the problems with anti-vaxxing is what's called herd immunity. Okay? It makes it sound like cattle, but go with me on this. So we all get vaccinated, partly so that we don't get the disease. And partly so that those who are too young to get the vaccine are highly unlikely to be exposed. What's happening with the now a statistically significant number of people not getting vaccinated is it not only puts them at risk, and that's just, you know, they're making bad choices, I think. Um, They're making different choices. I think it's a bad choice Um, for their selves and their family. And that's one thing. But it decreases the herd immunity. So it makes it that my young child will be more likely to be exposed before he can get his vaccine. Now, certainly, I'm going to vaccinate him as earliest at the earliest possible moment that I can, and I will breathe slightly easier when that happens, assuming he doesn't get measles in that meantime. But as this disease, as this outbreak works its way across the country, I'm looking at a potential where, and I'm, you know, moving to a libertarian state of Texas, so I'm, you know, this, this is really scary. It is, and it's because there's this sort of selfishness that comes with this whole anti-vax movement that, well, my child doesn't need it, uh, and my child is the only thing that matters. And yes, love your child, that's great. But also understand that you're also part of something bigger. You're part of this species that there's 7 billion of us, and we're currently... Um, having outbreaks of a disease that was considered eradicated, which means not completely gone, but, but like very, very few, few cases. cases, none of them fatal. Um, it's a disease to we now know how to we're deal up with. to what over a hundred yeah, in this year, two in months, two months. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. Because white people. Well, and, and that's <laughs> the thing, right? So a lot of it is like, oh, I don't want to put those toxins into my child's body. 
the chemicals same toxins are chemicals. that are in like che- Cheerios and stuff like right. that. <laughs> I mean, any well, these are the natural food people. So let's assume that they're eating no processed food, whatever you mm. know. Yeah. Any chemical is fatal if you have too much of it. Right. Oxygen, water. Anyone who had we were talking this pre-show. Anyone who knew anyone who took ecstasy growing up knows how bad water can be if you drink too much of it too quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean. Yes, these are artificially produced chemicals that prevent a deadly disease. And the only way, only reason why anti-vaxxing isn't just instantly deadly is because the rest of us get vaccinated. Yeah. In game theory and political science, we call this the free rider dilemma, right? So they're all benefiting from the fact that the rest of us are vaccinated. So they mm-hmm. don't have to. Um, until now, this outbreak of measles is in some ways pro- proving the lie to that. So they're no longer protected because so many of them have not gotten vaccinated. Now this disease is out there and it's spreading and it's spreading to two populations. One, the people who have deliberately not been vaccinated. And two, and to me, the bigger theological problem, those who are vulnerable and don't have the option to yet be vaccinated. Definitely. I mean, we have a there's people in this population who vaccines would actually legitimately hurt them because they have weakened immune systems. They have, um, they're under chemotherapy and they, they can't take HIV. The they have they, HIV. Yeah. Um, or they're under 18 months old and are right. just not, their immune system has not developed to the point where it can handle this vaccine. Right. And so that's when that whole herd mentality comes in or herd immunity herd comes immunity. in. Um, is you have these, these people who they're, they're surviving basically because everyone else is doing what they're supposed to do. Um, they're surviving because, you know, people who can get the vaccine get it so that the disease does not spread if it does enter the population. And let's right, be honest, there's, there's the un- very few avenues for it to go because there are very few people, statistically speaking, who are not eligible for this vaccine. They're either right. too young or, they, you know, they have something that's compromised their immune system. But again, that's relatively rare. The problem yeah. is, is those people who really can't, and I, you know, those are not the people we're on about, right? And right. Infants and sick people. This is not, right. you know, it's the same people who don't want to eat gluten, right? Uh, but, because, it, but again, yeah, it, yeah <laughs> who don't have celiac disease, and and the the that study has also been debunked. Yeah. Um. And so there's a great article by David R. Henson over at uh, Patheos dot com, um, and the title is really all you need to get the point. The Christian response to the measles outbreak. Love your ma- neighbor. Check your pri- privilege. Vaccinate your children. <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing we've been saying, right? That yeah. there's an element of, of the theological responsibility to love your neighbor. And one of the way, really easy ways that you can love your neighbor is get vaccinated yourself and vaccinate your children at the appropriate age. Because then you, the immunity you gain can be can help prevent the disease from spreading to people who are can't that it's yeah. a loving a it's a way of loving a vulnerable literally you know physically vulnerable group yeah uh, rather it's... than increasing those people's risk by making it now a significant now there are two groups who don't get vaccinated those who can't and those who choose not who to who won't who won't yeah. for what and, and there seems to be one of two reasons for this right mm-hmm. one is the kind of the toxins and we don't want you know that just the chemical i this I heard this interview with this berkeley mother who by the way is now vaccinating her children uh because she came face to face with it but she was previously interviewed to say you yeah. know i i don't want it's just, uh, all the chemicals he's just such a fragile immune system i don't want to put so much chemicals into his body and this is like a highly educated middle class berkeley lady um so there's that end of it and then there's also the theological end of it um, I, I made a mistake before the show, and I googled um, no, biblical reasons for not Google getting vaccinated. Um, I d- because I deliberately wanted to look at the kind of the scriptural evidence, right? And so it's a lot of like maintaining your body as a temple, and these are no neurotoxins, which that's not. N- yes, there's scary looking chemical names in these, but these have decades of being tested, and occasionally all drugs, as anything in life, have side effects. But those side effects are so minor that the federal drug administration approves these things it's it's they're fine they're healthy they, they're good mm-hmm. for you um it's been very very r- rarer than measles side effects mm. um 
Or, you know, there are examples of governments doing terrible things to people in the Bible. It is your calling as Christians to up, stand up to these governments. There um, are examples of governments doing bad things to people in the Bible. Public health is not one of them. Right. But it's, you know, like, you know, you have, can't eat the food. that You have to eat this food or whatever. It's just... And, and, and even this says, if vaccines were truly effective, the neighbor would not be in danger from someone who's not vaccinated. And that's not true. Yeah. Because there are these populations, infants, such as my soon to be infant child, um, who are vulnerable because you haven't vaccinated. Right. So the Bib- and it says the Bible teaches us that we are not to harm or wrong our neighbor by not getting vaccinated. You are putting you know, this is funny that the a pro-life group of people, such as these people who are not vaccinating their children for religious reasons, fine. Once your baby's born, you can die of measles. You can't yeah. get an abortion. No. No. That would be killing babies. But not getting vaccinated, that's not killing babies. Which could legitimately kill Which a could baby. Which could legitimately kill a, a un disputed baby right yeah the the the, the, the abortion baby debate, that is not up for debate right the abortion debate as ever is actually about when does life begin not killing babies but no one yeah. disagrees no one disagrees that a life that has exited the uterus <laughs> is a baby and a person and it's perfectly fine putting those lives at risk it, right yeah i mean if you are a fetus congratulations but as protected. soon as you're out you know, we can't have you protected because, as we all know, vaccines are the mark of the beast. Right. They're the and... mark of the beast. They're toxins. They're they... – so here's the other one that I – you know. So Sydney, my pregnant wife, um, who used to be the producer of this show, um, she teaches students with autism. Mm-hmm. And one of the big arguments against vaccinating is, oh, there's a risk of autism. That study has, by the way, been totally debunked. Yeah, um, he's he's – Lost that, his medical license. Well, it's accused of fraud. Okay. Yeah. So no, there's no link between vaccines and autism. Um, but even so, there this is discriminating against people with autism, right? Yeah. That you would rather put your child at risk of a deadly. And these are Sydney's words. Um, rather put your child at risk for a deadly disease than have them live with autism. That. It, do you understand how hurtful? And prejudiced that is against somebody with autism, who is also a valued child of God. Right. And can live a fulfilling human life um, that is inherently valuable. Um, Autism presents challenges, um, both for the person with autism and for the family. Yeah. No, it, it, you know, I, I too have worked with students with autism. Um, It's challenging. But they're no less human. They're no less our siblings in Christ. Right. Um, and we don't know what we to this day don't know what causes autism. We're pretty sure um, it's not vaccines. No. And in my kind of work, one of the underlying suspicions going on in special education is that Maybe autism, because it's called autism spectrum disorder, because there's a wide range of what it is to have autism. Oh, yeah. um, but what's interesting from a special ed point of view is that the, how you approach students with autism is very similar to how you approach students with ADHD and how you approach students with dyslexia, or what we call selective learning d- disabilities, SLD. Um, and that they may all be part of one thing, <laughs> that it's all just a spectrum of the brain processing the world in a different way. In a different way, yeah. And again, it has challenges associated with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not good logic, um, and it's certainly not Christian caring logic to say, well, I don't want my kid, it's so bad that my kid end up could that way. end up could, like that. That the I would light, rather, What was the, the I, go ahead. I would rather my child die from something that's easily preventable then maybe just maybe live have, with autism. Yeah, live with opti- autism. It was just like, so oh, I can't remember who this was, but I read some of the, that I would see the light go out in his eyes. This is probably another one of those Berkeley moms that I was reading um, because he has autism. Well, the it, light doesn't go out in someone's eyes. They, 
they, they do, see the world differently. And they struggle with eye contact and they struggle with human contact. You know, autism is a challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I really, it really bothers me that there's a certain logic to this that measles is somehow better than autism. Yeah. That, that, that this is, you know, that of course you wouldn't even want to vaccinate your kid in the middle of a measles outbreak um, because of the possibility that it's been totally disproven that they could yeah. get autism. But even if it hadn't been totally disproven, let, let's take that for a second. Um, that's still, that's dangerous logic. Yeah. Um, First Timothy 5, 8, uh, <laughs> the children are a gift from God and um, to partake of vaccines is to support that government that no longer has respect for the sanctity of life. That's mm-hmm. equating uh, vaccines with abortion. Um, because some vaccines are supposedly, according to this website, which I don't think this is true, produced from using aborted baby lung tissue. <laughs> it's not... Oh, God. That's... Yeah. They're safe. Um... I, you know, I, all of us, anyone with a scientific training will never say 100% anything, right? Because yeah. all drugs have some side effects occasionally. But those right. side effects are so rare as we it is perfectly, it is the right medical praxis, practice to expose infants to the infants and young children to these vaccines. Yeah. That's the level of safety that we deem these, you know, there are certain painkillers that we won't use on infants certain um uh, antibiotics that we won't use with infants or people Mm -hmm. with um you know compromised immune systems but we'll use these vaccines because of how effective they are in preventing deadly diseases whooping cough can kill you measles can kill you mumps can kill you we you know there are some side effects but those are minuscule compared yeah. to the benefit. And in public health, admittedly, is a field that looks at population levels, right? Yeah. And so if you have a population way of thinking, it's really easy to write off some side effects. Um, and, and I get, as Christians, it's harder. But those side effects are very, very small. Right. Very small. And the love in this system if we're thinking about loving our neighbor mm-hmm. is to make sure that those who cannot get the vaccine are not exposed by right. getting vaccinated ourselves and making sure that our children get vaccinated. That's how you can love your children. You know, I would say feel free to disagree with me and, and people will. Right. Uh, but the simple facts of it, the scientific facts way well outweigh the risks these Mm -hmm. things work these things save lives you know we are our government is spending millions of dollars every year and other organizations spending millions of dollars every year supporting vaccines in africa and south Mm -hmm. america and we're having to fight a battle to get people who have total access to these vaccines Mm -hmm. here in the united states yeah blows my ever loving mind and I mean, it scares me it scares me for my child if you want to care for the unborn and the newly born get vaccinated yeah plain and simple so steve have you have you ever encountered this kind of this anti-vaccine logic in person yeah yeah um a lot um sometimes it stems from the fact that there is and there are legit relig- religious practices that say, you know, don't get vaccinated. Not because um, of like, oh, because the government is trying to uh, kill people, kill you. It's because, well, I think it's what Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. You can't put anything unnatural in your body. Yes. I mean, um, you, there are legitimate religious movements that yeah. are, that have always been there that are legitimately very small. Um, yeah, that have uh, reje- some reject all modern medicine, um, right? The Amish, uh, for instance, right? Yeah. Um, but again, those have always been there, and those populations don't change yeah. radically over time. And so, it, it's it's not 
those groups that are really contributing. It's those that no. think these things will kill you. It's and so those you who do. have just a little bit of knowledge, um, which is always a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, it's like, I know what's in them, therefore everything is horrible. Well, no. Do you know what you're... Yeah. Do you know the stuff that... you know? Well, we've decided that this is good now. Well, remember when eggs were bad? Now eggs are good again? Right, it's because you read the science that comes across the local news. Yeah, yeah. You hear like, oh... You hear like, oh, I, I, someone's telling me that vaccines are, are bad, and it's Oprah. Well, there you go. Scientific... Uh, Oprah, uh, always scientific, and also these bath salts will really lead to enlightenment. <laughs> yep, yep. That's why when I get at, done with this, I'm gonna give myself a a bath in uh in those enlightenment bath salts. Right. Uh, <laughs> cost a hundred dollars and right. No needs. But from a theological standpoint, um, there's loving your neighbor, and then there's enabling. Um, and there's a difference. Um, so loving your neighbor is saying, hey, yes, you know, ultimately, it shouldn't be your choice. I'm sorry, a vaccine should be mandatory for everyone. That being said, um, it is your choice for you and your child. However, think about the broad reaching ramifications of what this is. Um, and then there's also saying, oh, everyone is, yeah, yeah, you're free to do whatever you want. Well, you've got to think about the people who are, who depend on us as a species coming up with these vaccines um, and using our intellect to... Our God-given intellect. Our God-given intellect, yeah, to uh, to get ourselves vaccinated. I mean, there is a thing that... I think so. someone said, um, <clears throat> I don't use aspirin because I only want to put natural things in my body. Aspirin's well, from willow trees? Yep. Do you, do you want to know what happens when we find something in nature and it can be used for our benefit? We turn it into medicine. Right. When we um, figure a way to maybe artificially produce it so we're not having to harvest willow trees and max. But right. one of the painkillers, and I think it's aspirin, is actually originally from willow bark. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and ultimately, you know, we you have to think about what you're doing for the good of yourself. Is it selfish reasons? Is it sure, legitimate? Sure, I mean, you know, I, I'm never against a good application of self-interest. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being self-sustaining, but there's also being selfish. Right, yeah. Um, and ultimately, you've got to think about, you know, what does Christ call you to do? Does Christ call you to only look out for yourself? Or does Christ call you to think about the people around you first? Um, and remember, including, including your child. And remember, I mean, don't fall into the logic that no one gets harmed if yeah. people don't get vaccinated. Right. People I mean, look, die. So yeah. there's a great website called, um, that I, it's terrifying, called antivaccinebodycount.com. Mm -hmm. um, and so it lists the number of people who have been number of illnesses that have been caused by anti-vaccine, the number of preventable deaths that have been caused by anti-vaccine, and the number of cases of autism that have been caused by vaccines. Um, and so 145,700 preventable diseases um, occurred from June 3rd, 2007 to January 31st, 2015. Mm -hmm. 6,336 deaths, preventable deaths, occurred because of anti-vaxxing from June 6th, 07 to January 31st, 2015. Mm -hmm. Zero instances of, uh, of vaccine-attributable autism occurred from June 3rd, 2007 to January 31st, 2015. So right. again, if what you're worried about is autism, there has never been a va vaccine-linked case of autism. Mm -hmm. There have been plenty of anti-vaccinating deaths and illnesses going on in this country right now. There are more cases of measles right now than there were cases of Ebola in the United States. Yeah. Think about that for a second as we slowly freak out. Yeah. And again, the loving option is to vaccinate because that is a way of caring for your neighbor. Yep. And on that note, 
should probably get out of here. If <laughs> you want to have a counter fact, counterpoint debate, as ever, we welcome you, and we will read your message on the show, and we will talk about it. Or you can even um, come on the show, and we would gladly continue this discussion. Right. Um, I am never against that. Um, come on. Um, we will, you know, we will argue against you. It'll <laughs> like, yes, but we can have this discussion in person because this this doesn't have to just be uh, two people who agree with each other sitting in a room. Uh, we can. We're not have, sitting in a room, so we're already halfway there. <laughs> sitting in two rooms in two parts of the country. Um, but if you have any feedback or want to come on the show and debate us about uh, vaccines, please um, mm-hmm. send boldly, S Y N boldly, at nfear.org. Facebook.com slash the sign your name project um, and at sin boldly S Y N boldly on Twitter and go in peace to love and serve the Lord and end fear by signing your name. Good night. Oh. I think the title is just going to be the loving thing is to vaccinate, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because ultimately that's, that's what the loving thing is. Is to vaccinate. Vaccinate right. children. I was vaccinated. So I turned that? out okay. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're just coursing with the blood of fetuses. And... Yep. Yep. What I love is the fact that people are like, these diseases are only in other countries, and they forget to real. They don't realize that. Get this. I'm gonna toss this out here. Um, people travel to the United States. I think we're the third biggest tourism destination international tourism destination right um and so guess what's going to happen you're going to come into contact with people who that come from countries that the disease is yeah, not, not been eradicated yeah right. yep